What's up guys, Adam here with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be building a mobile miter saw station. Now, you can see I've got my miter saw here and it really just does not fit this bench at all. There's no space for it. When sliding it back, it's almost hitting the wall. So we came up with the idea of building a mobile miter saw station. And this really does make it ideal because it can go pretty much anywhere in the garage. It can wheel around, it can wheel outside, it can wheel wherever you need it to be. And there's no limitations as far as sliding and turning and moving everything around. I'm gonna show you how I took this not ideal situation at all and, and I turned it into that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in and I'll show you how I did it. Let's go. So the first thing I did was start making all my cuts for my framing and the framing was built using two by four lumber. After I got all my cuts made, I was able to start then assembling and I used this right angle clamp in order to help to get everything squared up. And of course this is gonna have to be verified using a tape measure just to make sure that everything is in fact square, but this is a nice tool to use to help and get everything squared right off the get go. And then I was able to use a drill to then drill my pilot holes and then insert my screws while I was making my framing for the top and bottom shelves for the miter saw bench. Once both the top and bottom shelf framing was done, I was then able to start attaching the legs. I started attaching them to the framing for the top shelf. Then after the legs were attached to the top framing, I was able to then put it over the framing for the bottom shelf. Once those legs were in place on the bottom shelf, I was then able to screw it into place, connecting the bottom and top shelf. So make sure that you get some heavy duty wheels and get the ones that have some brakes on them to make sure that when you get your miter station moved to where you want it to be, that it stays there. And I really do recommend getting the heavier duty wheels. The cheaper ones just are not going to be as smooth and they're gonna be a little bit more wobbly where the heavy duty ones are very smooth and they're gonna be less likely for the bearings to go out quickly. So then I started working on the wings for these and the process is pretty much gonna be the exact same as the top and bottom shelves. The dimensions are just going to be different. The wings, the length is gonna be quite a bit longer but the width is exactly the same. And I also added some support in the middle because of the size of these, it's gonna be a workbench. So you wanna have as much support as you possibly can. I also then added support to the top and bottom shelves as again, it's a workbench. You want it to be as sturdy as possible and the top shelf is gonna be holding a pretty heavy miter saw. All right guys, so now I'm going to cut the tops for the bottom and top shelves of the main part of the workbench. And I'm gonna be using MDF board, which I really like MDF board for projects like this. It's very smooth. It's very flat, it's pretty durable. It does have some sagging issues if you don't have enough support in it over time, but I definitely have enough support for this particular project. I'm not worried about that at all. Now, when cutting it, I definitely wanna make sure that I'm wearing a mask because when cutting MDF board, it gets very dusty. But probably the biggest thing that I like the most about MDF board is the price because right now with the way that wood is and the pricing of wood, it is just so expensive. Unless you got into Bitcoin early, you're probably looking for any way you can on any projects you have to use alternatives to wood. And I haven't looked at wood pricing in a few weeks, but the last I looked, they were asking for a kidney and probably by now they're probably, they're probably wanting your soul. So next I started attaching the tops to the center portion of the workbench. And I did this by drilling some pilot holes first and then I used a countersink bit. After using the countersink bit, then I started inserting the screws so that the top of the screw head was just slightly below the top portion of the countertop. This just allows for a much smoother surface and just a cleaner look. Next, I was able to start working on the wings and I started off by attaching the brackets and I aligned the top part of the bracket with the bottom part of the countertop and the center portion of the workbench. And this allows for the bottom part of the wing to align with the bottom portion of that countertop so that once the top is put on the wing, it will be level with the base of the miter saw so that as wood is set on the base of the miter saw, it is then level with the wings themselves. 
At this point, then I was able to insert the screws to attach everything together. All right guys, so one thing that I definitely do wanna check before I secure these tops into place is I wanna make sure that these tops are level with the miter saw itself. Uh, you don't want it to be too low because you don't want your wood to be sagging. Then on the outside here, that could cause for, if you're trying to make a 90 degree cut, it might not be 90 degrees if it's sagging on this side. So wanna make sure that everything is level and that it doesn't have any issue with feeding across these wings. All right guys, so doing that test with the level really did tell us a lot. It told me that as it went across there, there was no concern with the height of the top. They are the height that they need to be. But it did show me that as I extended that level out, that these wings are slightly sagging. And that's what I was afraid of it with just using these brackets. It was never really my intention to just use the brackets and I'm not going to. I'm gonna add some legs to these just to give them the support that they should have. So normally I would put screws in the middle portions of the top as well, but because I'm gonna be putting a T-track into these wings so that I can put in some stop blocks or any kind of clamping that I might wanna do, I wanted to keep that area clear so that I don't have anything in the way of my router when I make that cut. I'll put extra screws in after the T-track is in place to make sure that the tops are secured. Next, it was time to start working on the legs. So you wanna find a level part of whatever surface you're gonna be working on. And at that point, you can measure from the floor to the center of that wing so that you know where the bolt is gonna to need to go. So I made my marks, and then once I made my marks, I was able to then drill out a hole and once I got the hole drilled in the leg itself, I lined it up with the center of the wing and then drilled a hole through the center of that. I then inserted a carriage bolt with a washer and then also installed a lock washer and a nut on top. This is going to allow for the legs to swing freely without the bolt coming loose. And then I just repeated the process with all of the remaining legs. Next, I needed to connect the legs so that when the legs are being swung up or down, that they are swinging together. And then next, I just installed some little blocks to stop the legs so that they would not over travel. I then got to the fun part of being able to start installing my T-Tracks. So I got everything measured out so it would line up with the miter saw. And then I used this clamp edge, which was really helpful in drawing the straight lines from edge to edge. And I repeated this process on each of the wings. Next, I just ran my router along my edge clamp on the wings to make my cut for my T-Tracks. Now, using that edge clamp really did make a big difference and helped to make that cut super straight. And when using a router, the, this particular palm router is not one of the larger routers that you can buy, but it can certainly do the job. Just going slow and steady and the router will take care of the rest, especially when going through this MDF board. Next, after the cuts were made, I was able to start applying my protective finish. And I ended up going with a polyurethane because I think it does a really nice job of not only providing that protective finish, but the way that it looks afterwards, I think it really does make it look really nice. I ended up having to do four coats of the polyurethane on this before I felt like it was to the place of where it was gonna offer that protective finish that I was looking for and I can say since doing it that it has done a great job holding up against running boards across it and actually I've used it as a regular workbench from time to time and it really has done a good job with that as well protecting the tops. Now usually when I'm putting tops on a workbench I will put a sheet of plywood underneath of the MDF board to give it the support that it needs but due to the small dimensions of all of the wings and the framing of this, it really wasn't necessary. So all I'm doing here is just inserting some extra two by fours directly underneath of the T-Tracks just to give it some added support where it's really going to need it. So now that T-Tracks are cut down to the correct length, now it's time to actually attach them to the bench itself. 
And I'm gonna start off by using an epoxy. Then I will put my T-Track down into the slot and then screw it down using number six screws. All right guys, so here is the final result and I could not be happier with how this turned out. It's mobile, but it's also very sturdy. So you can move it around wherever you want to have it at as far as storage goes or where you're gonna make your cuts. Of course, you've got the wings that fold down to cut down on the amount of space it takes when you're not using it. And then of course, when they fold up, they're extremely level. They're very sturdy, especially with adding those fold down legs that I came up with. And I like the dust collection system. It doesn't take all the dust away, but it cuts down on the majority of it. And of course, I really like the finish and the way that these T-Tracks work with them being embedded in this countertop. They're going to really give me some extra functionality with being able to put my stop blocks in in order to make repetitive cuts. If you wanted to use clamps for whatever reason, you could do that as well. Whatever you want to use in a T-Track, you could use it there, of course. All right, guys, so as always, I hope that you found this video to be helpful and maybe it gave you some ideas and some inspiration to build your own mobile miter saw station. This really was a fun project to do. And what makes it even better is that it's really functional. So I'm currently working on making some plans to show all the dimensions and everything that I have here today to be able to replicate this. Once they are done, they'll be down in the description down below. If that's something you're interested in, you can go check those out. And of course, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.